Hello, everyone. Welcome back to FC Hockey Scout Series. I'm here with Derek Newmeyer. Derek, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Kyle. Thanks for having me, and thank you for pronouncing my last name correctly. Most people don't get it. <laughs> You're very welcome. So uh, the reason I wanted to speak with you is I've been reading your Twitter and reading your scouting reports, and uh, recently you've kind of jumped on the train that there's a possibility that we could see a goaltender, Jesper Wallstedt, go first overall in this year's draft. So I was wondering if you could just kind of walk me through uh, how you came to that conclusion. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting year for the draft. Um, and I know there's always a lot of risk uh, when, you, when you're drafting a goalie high, uh, anywhere in the first round, really. But I think there is a real chance that, that Wallstead could could get into that conversation this year. I think he is in that conversation already now. And the main reason being, it is really wide open at the top. You've got a few names that are all kind of vying for that possibility. You know, Owen Power, Simon Edvinson, the Swedish defenseman, uh, Matthew Beniers is getting some uh, consideration there after a really great world junior performance. But I really think Wallstead has to be in that conversation as well. And there's a few reasons why. Uh, First of all, the last time a goalie went first overall was Marc-Andre Fleury, who went first overall to the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2003. And that worked out pretty well for them. Uh, and the, the year that I keep looking at as, as almost a comparison for this year is 2012, the 2012 draft where it was Nail Yakupov who went first overall. And it wasn't a great draft year. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty at the top like there is this year. But when you look at that class, the player that I think stands out as the best player from that class is Andre Vasilevsky, who was a goaltender. And, you know, there, there's always risk drafting goalies. They're the hardest position to scout uh, in hockey. But sometimes you just have a goalie who just checks off a lot of boxes and has a track record that's really hard to deny. You know, Wallstead has been advanced for his age, very advanced for his age for a long time. Yeah, even in the Swedish uh, under-20 league, you know, he was playing uh, at a high level, putting up great numbers um, as a 16-year-old. You know, he's been playing above his age group internationally for a long time. And right now he's uh, playing in the SHL and he's putting up some of the best save percentage numbers in the entire league. So when you look at all the body of work that he's put in and what he brings as a goaltender, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, I think that he just, he, he's such a sure thing, at least as sure a thing as you can get when it comes to goaltending prospects, that I think he, he deserves that consideration. You know, if you genuinely think he has the potential to be a number one goaltender at the NHL level, which I think he does, that's something you really, that those are hard to find, especially if you can get a guy at a young age, start him on an entry-level contract at a low cap hit, and let them grow within your organization. You know, that's an opportunity that doesn't come along very often. And in a draft year where there's not a sure thing at the top, there's not a, you know, an Alexis Lafreniere who's the de facto top guy and has been for a long time. I think it's something that a lot of teams can and should consider. So let's dive a bit into his game and, and what you've seen so far. I'm curious what you look for when you're scouting a goaltender and which of the boxes Wallstedt checks off and what he still needs to improve on. I don't personally have uh like a set style or a set type of goalie that i look at uh last year i was a big fan of yaroslav askarov and i still am uh even after he had a shaky world junior performance he checked off a lot of interesting boxes his speed his athleticism uh his reflexes but wallstead he's a very different type of goaltender but i value him highly because he checks off a bunch of other different types of boxes so first is his natural size he naturally covers a lot of net and you know, size isn't everything, but it is a huge advantage if you have it. He's also incredibly poised and confident for a goaltender his age. It's funny to watch him play in the SHL, which I've done a couple of times this season, and he doesn't look like a teenager. You know, he looks like someone who's 10 years older than he is the way he faces shots. I've seen him stare down players on breakaways like it was nothing. He's incredibly poised in his net. Some goaltenders, especially young ones, they get scrambly. Uh, when things start to get uh, a little little more pressured around him, he doesn't have that. Uh, he he swallows up rebounds really, really well. They, they bounce uh, into him, but they don't really bounce very far out of him. And when they do, he's able to cover them up really well. His positioning and his technique are really, really advanced. When he squares up to a shooter, there's really not a lot of room for shooters to look for. They don't really get many pucks under his shoulders or through his five hole. 
Uh, and yeah, like, like I said, when he, when he gets on his knees in the butterfly, he's still covering up a ton of net. So there's a lot of different things that he can do really, really well. He's not a perfect goaltender. Uh, I find that his, his quickness is a little bit lacking. Um, and that's something you see a lot out of the bigger guys, you know, going post to post, he can be a little bit slow. His reflexes can be a little bit slow sometimes, but that's okay. It's, it's almost impossible to find any player who checks off all of the boxes. And that's true for goaltenders as well. But I think he checks off a lot of different boxes at a very high level. And I think the package that he brings and how he approaches the game, I think it's, it's very, very impressive. You and I were speaking before a bit about um, the way Wallstep plays. You know, he's a very technical goaltender. Um, a, a lot of people can get caught up with goaltending highlights and, and guys that make a lot of desperation saves, stretch saves, uh, crazy athletic saves. But if you look into the stats, uh, the guys that stop more of the puck are the guys that kind of play deep in their crease. I think of Henrik Lundqvist, one of the most consistent goaltenders of his generation. And that's something that you see in, in Wallstedt. Um, and I'm curious how he compares to Askarov, who does kind of fit into the other category of uh, of being more of an athletic goaltender. Yeah, they're, they're very, very different types of goaltenders. And both types of goaltenders can find success. Um, Askarov... He always reminded me a little bit of Jonathan Quick, where he, he can do those big uh, split uh, split saves. He, he can move really, really quickly from post to post. He's got the crazy reflexes that can snap pucks that, that come at him at a, at a quick pace. Um, but Wallstead is a very, very different type of goaltender. Um, stylistically, I, I find him very similar to someone like Connor Hellebuck of the Winnipeg Jets. You know, he's a big guy. He eats up a lot of net, but he's just so... Uh, tight with his form his positioning is really really consistent his rebound control is is really uh, there's he doesn't give up a lot uh the pucks don't really bounce into the crease around him and there's something to be said about the style that he plays as well and i think it's it's something that can lend itself well to to being a starter in the nhl level with with wall said he doesn't look like he expends a lot of energy you know, the goaltenders who are really scrambling, they're doing the splits all the time. You run a little bit more risk of either A, gassing themselves out because they're getting too tired trying to make all these acrobatic saves. And B, you also run a bit of risk of, of injury if you're, you know, a goaltender uh, is always a little susceptible to growing problems. And if you're kicking your legs out constantly, that's obviously going to get a lot worse. Uh, but with Wallstead, he's very conserved with his energy. He conserves energy really, really well. He doesn't expend a lot of it, which allows him to, you know, keep a consistent pace throughout a game. You know, I've seen games where it'll be late in the third period and over time, and he still looks really fresh. He doesn't look tired. He doesn't look worn out. And when you look at a goaltender that you want to start 60 or more games in the season, you want a guy who can preserve his energy and maintain a consistent pace. And I think that's something that a goaltender like Wallstead has a better chance of doing than a goaltender like Askarov. They're both good goaltenders and they can do different things. But when it comes to consistency and, and maybe even you know length of career at a high level, I think that a goaltender like Wallstead has a better chance at that. So I looked at some of your scouting reports on Wallstead. Um, you looked at a game during the World Juniors as well as a game in the SHL. Uh, in both games, you rated him low, as we spoke before, on athleticism, but very high um, on positioning and anticipation. And it would appear to me, uh, you're the expert here, but that uh, anticipation, hockey sense, that sort of thing is something that can't be taught. Whereas his athleticism is something, you know, he's only 18, he's really big, but he's still got room to grow that he can get better at moving side to side. But what can't be taught is the skills he already has. Is that true? Well, you certainly can't teach him. You can't teach size. Uh, that's an advantage that he's always going to have. And I think you can teach certain things. Uh, I think you can develop a goaltender's positioning. You can develop their technique, you know, how they hold their hand or their blocker, uh, how, how they crouch in a stance, um, you know, how they cover a post. There's certain things that you can work on and refine in terms of, of style. But I think there's certain mentality that Wallstead has, just, just the way he thinks the game, uh, his confidence in the net. I don't think that's something that you can fully, fully teach. Um, there are some goaltenders that have that ice in their veins. You know, they, they stare down shooters and they don't flinch. Uh, some goaltenders can get rattled. You know, they let in a weak goal and suddenly there's another weak goal gets past them and they look like a different goaltender. Maybe they start scrambling for saves as, as we saw with Escarov at the world juniors, you know, he started to, 
he started to lose his confidence a little bit. With Wallstead, I think there's a certain mentality just to how he is as a person and how he plays the game. And I think a lot of that comes from experience too. You know, he's been a, a high-end goaltender playing above his age group uh, for a long time. So I think he's had a good uh, head start when it comes to building up that confidence and, and that belief in himself and that ability to, you know, keep his composure. And I think that's something that it, it's very innate in him. And I think that's something that a lot of other goaltenders don't have to the same level. Now, looking at his track record so far, his season in the SHL has been incredible. Uh, 13 starts, he's already got 10 wins. I'm wondering if he keeps up playing this well, how unprecedented for an 18-year-old would this season be in the Swedish Hockey League? Well, uh, honestly, I'm trying to think of the last time uh, a goaltender put up these kind of numbers uh, in the SHL at his age. And honestly, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. You know, it's rare to see goaltenders at all at this age um, as, as the starters on their team. And it seems like Wallstead has, has assumed that role uh, for Lulia, so, or Lulio, sorry. I might have pronounced that again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very unprecedented. You know, you'll occasionally see goaltenders, they'll get a backup job or they'll get a few starts here or there. But to not only get the number of starts that he's getting, but also to put up some of the best save percentage and goals against average numbers in the league at, at his age, that's very unprecedented. And I don't know if it has been done before. I would have to go and check this after, after we finish recording. But I can't think of any, any comparable off the top of my head. Even someone like Henrik Lundqvist, you know, I think he took a little bit longer to get where he is or to get to, get to the same sort of level in the SHL. Wallstead seems pretty ahead of the curve compared to, compared to past comparables. So in the past two drafts, we've seen goaltenders go in the first round. We talked about Askarov in uh, 2019. Spencer Knight also went first round. I'm curious, do you think in the NHL, scouts are becoming more prone to selecting goalies this high? Or is it just a case of the goaltenders are that good and they have to be selected that early? So there is this reputation uh, that goaltenders are voodoo, uh, is, is the quote I believe that gets used quite a lot. And honestly, there's, there, it's, it makes sense why people are skeptical about drafting goalies in the first round. And the main reason being that the track record for doing so over the last you know, 20 years, if not longer, has been pretty bad. There have been a lot of first round busts uh, when it comes to drafting goaltenders. So I, I, and, and like I said earlier, there's no doubt that goaltenders are riskier than any other position. You know, you're putting a lot of pressure on a single player on the ice. They play the whole game. You know, there's only two goalie spots on a roster. So it's, it's definitely a much harder position. But I think that the scouting world has become better at identifying goaltenders that have real potential. I think we're getting, we're all getting better at identifying the types of things that goalies need to do. I think we're getting better at understanding success in context. Uh, something that we saw in the past was you'd have a goal, you would have a good international tournament or two good inter international tournaments, but they wouldn't be quite as good in their club play. And I think teams would overlook that in some cases. So we're, I think we're getting better at identifying a goaltender's potential. Obviously there's still risk, um, but there's risk with scouting any player, you know, if, whether forward defenseman, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be a risk there, but I think that, the scouting world has kind of evolved in, in a lot of ways. And I think we're better at learning from our mistakes when it comes to the goaltenders that didn't pan out. And I think that there is, there's less risk when it comes to goalies, as long as you have a good understanding of what sort of player they are and what their upside is and the types of boxes that they check off. So I think that there's, there's, the, the success rate when it comes to drafting goaltenders, I think has been going up over the last few drafts. And I think that's going to continue happening. I don't think Spencer Knight is going to be a bust. I don't think Yaroslav Skarov is going to be a bust considering the number of times he's had great games is far outnumbered the number of times he had bad games. And I think with Wallstead too, I think there's just so much there. And I think that he checks off so many different boxes and he's got such a good track record right now that I think any team that drafts him high, however high he goes, I think they're going to be very confident in, in what they're getting. I'm interested on what you think. Um, in the goaltenders that have turned out to be busts, uh, Jack Campbell, Rick DiPietro, those kind of guys, they, um, what do you think is the common theme between all of them and, and what's causing them to be busts? They're, they're, I don't know if there necessarily would be a single common theme. 
Um, some, like I mentioned, some goaltenders have put, put up really good numbers uh, in international events. You know, they steal like a five game series, a, a, like a playoff series, maybe you know, like the, or they perform well at the Memorial Cup or something like that. So I think small sample size is definitely something that you've had to worry about. You know, obviously the bigger the sample size of a goalie succeeding at a high level, the less likely they are to, uh, to end up being a bust. Um, I think a, bar, a large problem too, and it's not so much necessarily the scouting side of things, but it's also the development side of things. So with Jack Campbell, for example, uh, the Dallas Stars, they didn't have uh, a great um, strategy when it, comes, when it came to developing goaltenders. And this is something that Jack Campbell even said in interviews. You know, he felt almost like he was a little bit of a bit of left alone on island when it came to his, came to his development with the Stars. Uh, after Campbell left the organization, you know, they hired a dedicated uh, goalie scout or a goalie coach, sorry, to work on the goalie prospects. So it's something that they've rectified. But I think that was something we saw a, a lot in the past with teams. They didn't necessarily know what to do with the young goalies they had. Um, maybe they brought them into the NHL too early. Maybe they didn't have a specialist that could help develop them uh, whenever they went off to their junior league or overseas. So I think development played a large part of the problem too, but I think that NHL teams have learned a lot from those mistakes. And I think we're going to see uh, a lot more consistency with regards to how teams are drafting goaltenders moving forward. So I'm, I'm interested if you're a GM of the team that selects Jesper Wallstedt, uh, what would be your development plan? Would you leave him in Sweden for a couple more years? Would you bring him to your AHL team? Would you play him as a backup? How would you handle him? I would say at least one more full season in Sweden, you know, let him and the SHL is a great league. It really is. It's some, one of some of the best hockey in the whole world. And if he's going to be the starter again, which he probably would be next year in the SHL, you know, he's getting minutes. He's facing uh, good competition, including former NHLers that play in that league. There wouldn't be any rush. Um, and, but there's, there's a lot of pressure to be a goalie in the NHL level uh, a lot more so than, than in Sweden. So I think you'd want to be very careful with him. And that might be, you know, something you could say as an argument against drafting him high, because he's probably not going to be a guy that you can bring over too early. Maybe when he's 20, uh, maybe not till he's 21, but with goalies, they, they do take more time and you have to be extra careful with their development with Wallstead. I mean, maybe give him a shot, you know, see if he can see what he does in like a training camp and see how it performs compared to like, your, your NHL guys and see how far he off, how far, how far off he is that way as, you know, kind of like a, like a measure, a measurement. But I I think you would want to give him at least one more full year in Sweden, if not two, just because goaltenders, you got to be extra careful with them. And there's not really any, any major harm in letting him marinate over there. If he's getting a lot of starts against good competition. You're right. That is the strategy used by most teams. There are a few outliers and Carter Hart is the name that came to mind. Um, You know, Philly's, had bad luck in goaltending for so long. And I think they weren't even making the playoffs. And then Carter Hart steals the job and look where they are. Now they're being talked up, talked about as a Stanley cup contender in, in that sort of circumstance. uh, How did it work out for Carter Hart? Well, Carter Hart was a very good goaltender going back a long time, even to a 16 year old year uh, with Everett and WHL and with Hart, you know, he, he, he forced Philadelphia's hand basically. He just kept performing at such a high level that they couldn't really afford to to keep him down. You know, if if he was he was outperforming the goaltenders they had on their NHL roster. So when a guy is doing that, you know, you can't you can't really say no. And that might be something that happens with Wallstead as well, right? You know, you never want to rush a goaltender, but you also have to you know be aware if if he's the best option you have between the pipes. Sometimes you have to rush things a little bit and let him see what he can do. Uh, but I think that's the, really the big thing is, is to not force a, a player into a situation where they have to burden uh, a really heavy load, uh, give them a chance, see what they can do. If, but you got to have options for, for where you're going to play him. You know, even with Wallstead, maybe bring him over North America and pencil him in as, as the AHL starter for the first time. You know, maybe he gets an NHL call up, maybe he performs well, maybe you have to move your back up because Wallstead outplayed him. But I think it's important to give your guys options to see where they can do. With Carter Hart, he just he didn't really give uh, Philadelphia much choice about about who they wanted to put between the pipes. He was too good. He he won the job outright, and you know it worked out really well for the Flyers. 
And, you know, if we're talking about drafting goalies in the first round, I bet there are a lot of teams that are regretting letting Carter Hart fall as far as he did. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Derek. It's been great to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kyle. Take care.